got three strong right here. Okay. okay. And then from the entrepreneurship group. Okay, we got a couple over here. And then who uh, knows what Devo Customs is? Oh wow, that's not surprising. I was like prepared to say a joke about you guys not knowing, but okay, <laughs> that's good. Um, that's awesome. And then who here is like wants to start their own business, maybe has a small business going? Awesome, sweet guys. Well. That's, that's great, that gives me a lot of context as to where I want to go with this. Um, first, I just want to talk a little bit about my origin story, how I started, um, a little bit about how I run my business now, and then hopefully have some advice for you guys uh, at the end and leave a, a lot of room for Q&A. So, without further ado, let's jump into it. <coughs> I'm start off with a little video. So yeah, I want to start all the way back. This is Young Devo. Um, my dad's actually in the room. He helped me find some of this uh, imagery here. Um, but yeah, I wanted to start all the way back. Grew up in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and from a very young age, I knew I was passionate about two things, uh, being art and sport. So, uh, you know, wanted to, I was, if I wasn't on the Saturday morning watching the cartoons and drawing the cartoons I saw, I was in the backyard kicking the ball around uh, and shooting the ball. So. Very passionate about these two things at that point in time. I didn't know these could be practical career routes. I was never told that you know you could actually get paid for doing stuff like this. Um, but just things I wanted to surround myself with uh, and really had a passion for. And so, kind of knowing that, went through the system, uh, graduated high school, went to UP here, ran track with some of these guys back there, had a great experience, um, and eventually landed an internship with Adidas. Um, very fortunate as sport being one of my passions, right? This is one of the uh, leading companies in the sportswear industry and it was a dream come true. Uh, so I was on the marketing side, I was on the graphic t-shirt team. And so it was a great role and we got to spend a lot of time with the graphic designers at Adidas. And these were the guys who I thought were the coolest dudes in the company. Basically, they got to sit around all day and draw the t-shirts that we sold. And to me, there was no more perfect blend of sport and art than being at a sportswear company and then drawing the t-shirts. And so from there as an intern, still finding my role, that I knew that's what I wanted to do. And I knew I wanted to chase after that. And so uh, through some networking, I weaseled my way into a couple of interviews for graphic design jobs and got turned away consistently. So uh, I, one, didn't have a portfolio. Apparently you need one of those. Um, and then also I didn't have any skills in Photoshop or Illustrator or anything like that. And then to boot, I was going up against guys who had like four plus years in art school, a couple like years in the industry, and it was tough to roll the dice on me as someone who was passionate about art but just not have any of the technical skills. So I, I didn't let that stop me from trying to you know still land a position at Adidas, and I figured I'd start working on a portfolio the only way I knew how, and that was traditionally applying paint uh, to the garment. And so after a lot of trials and tribulations, I landed on making this piece as my first piece. Was really stoked about it, and this is where Seaflow came in. Um, I was Seaflow, uh, him and I were just buddies in college, had a lot of classes together, and um, you know it, it was he was known for being one of the best photographers on campus. And so I hit him up, really excited about doing this, and uh, he, he helped me take these photos. Ended up posting them on Instagram, and they got a lot of attention. Um, which was cool and then you know it wasn't until someone said hey can I buy this to where it switched in my head you know maybe it wasn't about 
getting that graphic design role at Adidas anymore, but instead maybe that this could be my thing. And so uh, I made a couple more projects, keep working with C-Flow, it's a good formula, it was working, and uh, actually ended up sending this jacket to Lil Yachty himself. Do you guys know who Lil Yachty is? Yeah, shout out, shout out Lil Yachty. Um, but anyway, sent it up himself, and um, he actually posted it on his uh, Snapchat story. And uh, for me, it was surreal, not only an artist who I was looking up to, uh, who shared my work, but also uh, just a big moment for Devo Customs, and it kind of validated that, you know, Nathan, you're good at this, you should, you should keep doing this. And so from there, Devo Customs was born. Um, you know, I, this is where I hit up my friend Taylor Hendricks. Some of you might know, uh, one of my best friends, he designed the logo that you see here. Um, and so I was popping, I had my logo, I had my website, my Instagram page, my Facebook, my, my YouTube, and I was going, I was moving, and uh, I took a look back, and this logo was still just a logo. Um, you know, it, without any meaning behind it, I wanted it to um, evoke some sort of emotion for people looking at it, right? So that's when I went back to the business plan and thought about what I wanted Devo Customs to stand for. And I came up with the mantra of everyone is creative. So to unleash the creativity in everybody. And um, I did this for a couple reasons. First, my story, right? So I, I got turned away from design jobs. I didn't let that stop me from trying to be creative and pursuing. Um, and the way I position Devo Customs is that I empower the customer to be the creator and the designer. You know, they're the ones who come with the concept, the picture, the idea, and I'm just the executor. And so I'm trying to bridge that gap of people who might not think they're creative because they're told they're not, and then actually being creative and, and seeing that through. And so that was the mission of Devo Customs. I unleashed the creativity and, and it finally had a meaning. So now, uh, just kind of how I run my business today. So 95% of the time, people hit me up on Instagram, kind of asking some information about the jacket. So $200, $300, depending on design, and the average turnaround is about five to six weeks right now. They agree, they send me the jacket, get the jacket. Um, they'll have some design inspiration. It could be as specific as a, a certain picture, or you know maybe it's just like something whimsical or something like that. Uh, and then I sketch the design, send it back, get the okay, and then I start painting. And then once I paint, hit up Seaflow, take some photos, and send it back to them. So this is what a typical transaction looks like, the touch points with the consumer, and it's gotten to this point, it's, it's now pretty smooth, and it, it helps because now, it, once it's a smooth sort of interaction, uh, it helps you get recommended. So that's a little bit how, how it started, how I was running it. Um, and I think you know people talk about starting a business, and, and to me, starting the business was the easy part. It was that second stage of evolving the business and growing the business that I, I really that was really hard. So um, I want to tell this kind of success story that happened. Um, you know, if, does anybody know what Portland Gear is? Okay, the owner of Portland Gear, his name is Marcus. Uh, he showed up actually at a, kind of an event like this, and uh, his words really left an impression on me. Um, and so I was kind of in a rut with Devo Customs about four months in. I hit him up, just asking for some advice. And uh, he hits me back saying, look, your product's dope, but you need to get it on influencers if you want to grow. That, that's how you grow. And so I'm like, all right, cool. I mean, you're an influencer. If I make a jacket for you, will you post it? Will you share it? Will you talk about it? He's like, absolutely. So this photo to the right, um, I made this jacket for him. Seaflow and I drove all the way out to Multnomah Falls, took the photo, sent it to him, gave it to him, and he posted it. And yeah, lots of leads, and it was great. And that was that. Um, so you know, in the next year or so, we're just common exchanges, uh, still keeping in touch. But uh, eventually, uh, I hit him up on one of his Instagram stories, and he's responded back saying, hey, I showed your stuff to CJ. And I'm like, CJ who? CJ McCollum. And I'm like, okay, dang, that's crazy. Um, so if you guys don't know who CJ McCollum is, I hope you guys do, but he's the shooting guard for the Portland Trailblazers. Um, really cool guy, and I got the opportunity to make him four custom jackets. Um, and then also meet him after the game. And this was all facilitated by Marcus, um, so I can't thank him enough for that. So not only was this a huge moment for Devo Customs and building that demand, um, and just having CJ's cosign really like legitimize it as a business, but it was also just, again, those passions of art and sport coming together. You know, me practicing my craft and art and then him performing in sport at the highest level, it was just really cool to see those worlds collide. 
that's one story. And then I got this second story, which super random. Um, so I was actually at my desk at work, and uh, a friend from high school hits me up. Her name's Elise, and she's like, hey, you should make some custom art for a blogger that I follow. I'm like, okay, <clears throat> check it out. So I checked out her page, good blogger, good content, and um, I, I go through some photos, and I see that she's posing with uh, an NFL player, and he happened to be Eric Kendricks of the Minnesota Vikings. And so I uh, saw this opportunity, you know, reached out. She was super excited about it. Um, and, and that was awesome, and at that point, I had two decisions I could make. So there was one, I could charge it, or charge the jacket that I usually do for most customers, or two, I could do the, get the, buy the jacket for free, do the art for free, in hopes that she would share it. And um, I went with the latter, which uh, to my wife was, was kind of uh, grieving of, over that, but I, I invested the time, invested the money, and started working on this jacket for her. Um, and so I, I actually sent her like a progress photo, and she was so excited she posted the progress photo. So I hadn't even finished the jacket yet. And then that day I got four more leads from other uh, women who had Vikings players on the team. Um, and so it was kind of funny that I was kind of getting into this, this network, and then I made some for her friends, their friends shared, and then so on and so forth. And it just kind of kept compounding and compounding, um, which was really cool. And it all just started for kind of taking that leap of faith and that investment. Um, and so now uh, I sit here, I've done jackets for the wives or significant others of six NFL players and then three different teams. So the Minnesota Vikings, the Jacksonville Jaguars, and then the Indianapolis Colts. So um, it's been crazy to see how, seeing obviously the, the stuff on field, bringing those passions of sport and art again. Um, and yeah, it's just been great. Oh, was it already? <laughs> no, um, dope. So those are kind of my, my success stories, um, and you know I kind of want to shift gears into this kind of advice giving portion and talk about three behaviors for me uh, that have really helped kind of grow and, and maintain this business. Um, so there's going to be pretty corny, but stick with me. I promise they they work. So yeah, the first one is passion. So lately I've been thinking about myself not necessarily an entrepreneur but just someone who's chasing passion. And I encourage everyone to do the same. Devo Customs happens to be that vehicle to where I can chase that passion, um, but passion is that fuel to, to get into the passions of sport and art. And so um, just some examples about the passion that, that I really feel about this is, you know, I work a 40 hour job at Adidas and then I come home and I paint. And then if I'm not painting, I'm posting on Instagram, working on digital, um, working on all of that. And uh, just some of the sacrifices too. So like, don't watch Netflix. So if you have a new Netflix show, haven't seen them. Um, you know, I uh, I haven't bought new clothes probably in the last year. Uh, it's all been like thrift stores and stuff. So I'm investing my, my money in it too. Um, and then like, I, I haven't hanged out with friends as much. Luckily these guys showed up so I get to see them every, every now and then. But, um, so I'm just making these sacrifices. But for me, they're, they're easy sacrifices to make given how passionate I am about this. And, and that's why I work with Seaflow, right? He has a, a passion for photography, and um, I, I like to surround myself with, with passionate people to help this engine go. Um, little story, Seaflow and I did a shoot. It was probably 9 a.m. on a Saturday morning in December of last year, um, and it was at Council Crest on the top of the hill, and it was probably, it was called, yeah, 20 degrees, maybe lower. With the wind. With the wind, it was down there. It was cold, it was cold. Um, but I mean, if it wasn't for the passion I had for, for this project and the passion he had for photography, we could have called it a day and left, but instead we got some really good content um, and, and made it from there. So passion is important. And I think when I talk about passion, some people, you know, I don't know if they've found their passion yet and that's totally fine. I feel like I recently found mine and I just wanna offer some words of advice if you're looking for what that passion might be. So for me, what worked, uh, I actually listened to a speaker come uh, in, at UP when I was a senior in college, and he said, you know, a lot of you know your passion, but you're just too afraid to chase it, or too afraid what other people will think. And for me, that hit me. I, I mean, I knew from a youngin, right, that it was art and sport, but I, I wasn't executing on stuff to chase that and to get me there. And then the second thing I, I, would, I would, this is just my personal theory, is to think back when you were like six, seven, eight years old, 
And you know, what were those things that you really liked doing? This is like before, um, welcome. Oh, what up, dude? <laughs> um, you know, this is before there's the influences of your friends, your parents, um, anything like that. So what, what were you doing in that space uh, before those influences? My theory is that uh, an element of your passion is, is in that. So that's passion. The second is kindness, again, really corny, so stick with me. Um, you know, I, I think kindness is really, really underestimated. Um, you know, in general, no one wants to do business with someone who's not kind, uh, who's not easy to work with. So there's that, there's the obvious part. And then kindness is also, for me, I think of it as a strategy. So I, it's, it's practical. Um, you know, if you were to search hashtag custom jacket on Instagram right now, thousands of kids would come up. I'm not the only one running this business model, and I realize that. And I realize that I, me and my kindness is a big part of what, what brings my clients in. And so what does kindness look like? In this space, you know, kindness is replying to people who commented on some of your content, because they took the time out of their day to leave a comment to consume your content. So it's replying back to them, it's not being cocky, um, you know, it, it's, it's a lot of things. It's very simple, but it's gotta be real. I think that's the biggest part about kindness. It's gotta be real, it's gotta come from the heart. Um, and then kindness for me has also been a foundation, something I can fall back on. You know, if something doesn't go my way, I've done projects for a ton of influencers before and they haven't always posted or talked about it or shared it. And instead of getting angry at the situation and putting my energy there, you know, I revert back to kindness. Uh, just knowing that, you know, my kindness will eventually have someone share it that I wasn't even expecting, so. For me, it's been that foundation. And then the last one for me is courage. Um, so this one was the hardest one for me. I'm actually generally a pretty like reserved person. Like this, this experience is, is new for me, um, but it's been great. So Devo Customs has forced me to not only put my art out there, but put myself out there, put my business out there. Especially during a time in social media where there's no hiding. You know, no, there's no privacy anymore. You know, putting yourself out there, everyone can see your biggest wins and your lowest of losses. And so I've jumped in and it's been hard, it's been challenging, but it's also been extremely liberating, right? So I think, especially in this time with the fake news, the fake environments, uh, people are gravitating towards things that they know. They're gravitating towards the truth. And if I keep putting the truth out there, I think people are gonna connect. And, and they have so far and so, putting my whole self out there, putting my truth out there, has really worked for me. And then I think the second part of courage um, is that having the courage to reach out, you know, if you need help. Um, uh, if I wouldn't have reached out to Marcus, right, the whole CJ thing wouldn't have happened, and that took two years to really develop. Um, and so, yeah, have, having the courage to reach out when you need help, to DM, you know, 50 to, 100 influencers every night knowing that 99 will say no, but one might say yes, and one yes is all you need. And so the courage to do that and the courage to not care what, what your friends think about that. So that's my, my spiel on my, my three sort of emotions and behaviors uh, that have helped. And I couldn't do this talk if I didn't reference UP and just how big of a backbone it played into the success of Devo Customs. Uh, so all these images here are, are students who went here or places around UP. Uh, Sifo and I actually have almost gotten kicked out of the photo studio a couple times for using it too much as alumni. So, um, but anyways, uh, that, that is just, a, um, what's it called, just a metaphor basically for um, how much support UP ha has given me. Um, just reflecting back on my time, right, so I was on the UP track team uh, I also played club soccer, which I probably wasn't supposed to do. Um, you know, I did community service, so once a week I was a tutor, and then I volunteered at an organization called Playworks. Um, and then I had two part-time jobs. One was an intramural referee, wasn't the best at that either, but, um, and then my, my other one was a cartoonist for the school newspaper. And so I was involved in a lot of different groups, right? A lot of different networks, a lot of different communities. And so when I started Devo Customs, I got a lot of support from all these different communities. So I think that has just helped me branch out using those communities, using that network, and when I started and having that support in so many different places helped immensely. And so um, I guess with that, my advice for you guys who are students, um, really use this time. Use this time, use this time to build your network, 
go to the fall dance, even though you don't want to, you know, join one or two clubs, just knowing that even if you don't want to be an entrepreneur, these people here want to help you. They want to see you succeed in this network. And it's, it's a special time. It's a unique time to use these resources uh, that we have available. And it, and it worked out for me and, um, you know, it's, and it, it worked out for me, so. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's basically it. <laughs> thank you guys, I want to thank Taylor for hitting me up and having this opportunity. I want to thank my dad, if I want to my, my dad. Yeah. Yeah. He surprised me, I didn't know he was coming, so that was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, yeah, thank you guys. And so, yeah, questions. Yeah, Boom. I got some stuff to say and then a question. Yeah, well, um, first of all, you get this because you were the first one to ask the oh, question. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate it, to be honest. Um, so I've been a part of this club for like, since freshman year, I'm a senior now. Yeah. I've been to a lot of meetings and, and events like this. Yeah. Where the, the corny ending that everybody wants falls on deaf ears. And I think it's because it's uh, sort of a last minute, people kind of throw something on, I want to inspire these people. I, this was like the most refreshing version of that I've ever seen. And I think it's because Man. in a short half an hour, you were able to like show us that you really embody those three traits. And that's, first of all, super rare. And second of all, I appreciate it a lot. And I think everyone here will take away a lot from your talk just because you're such a genuine, nice person, um, <laughs> because you're courageous, Kindness. and because you're passionate. <laughs> so thanks for that. I think that's, Thank you. that's no, cool. I really appreciate that. Are you that. sure this is your first time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, my, my question is like, so if, say, if, if someone gave you 100, 100 grand and said quit Adidas, how would you spend all your time growing this business? Like, where do you see it ideally going? Wow, that's a great question. Um, first, I buy a new car. No. Um, <laughs> so I, I, the way I'm thinking about it, I have like a five-year plan and then a 20-year plan. So the five-year plan, and I think the next iteration of this is doing some more like branded, um, like fashion line that still is core and like creativity and still empowering the consumer in some way. I haven't figured that out yet, um, but staying true to the brand, but making it more of a fashion line, um, just so I can service more people and grow, right? Because it's one-on-one -on -one every time, it, it, it's tough. Um, and then there's the 20-year plan, which is the North Star for me, uh, which goes back to the brand. Um, it's a creative agency. Yeah. So, um, like I said, I want people to think creativity when they see that logo, and I think if I build the brand, uh, to that point to where people are making that connection that Devo Customs means creativity. Um, I think I'll get clients and stuff and then grow it from there and it's just something I've always dreamed of doing. And then, you know, building this process along the way, like, you know, it, that's like client based right there, right? So uh, every, every person I do a jacket for is, is someone who might eventually tap in if I did something like this. So um, that's, that's the North Star vision and then, the, yeah, the five year plan. So. But like as, as far as exact tactics on like how I would spend the money, um, probably a lot of Instagram ads and Facebook ads. <laughs> but honestly though, it, I mean, it's really underpriced right now. Um, probably doing some of that. Uh, quit, I quit my job. Get better stuff. If you guys see my setup, it's like really whack. <laughs> it's like a folding table in my kitchen. Um, and like, yeah, so I probably like Get, get nicer stuff just so I can be more efficient and, and, and make better product at the end of the day. Um, so yeah, that, that's that's a really good question. Um, yeah, cool. I answered it. Yeah, good luck, man. Sweet, thank you, thank you. Oh, you were just a second before you, <laughs> and so you actually get this. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> um, you had mentioned that you wanted to create some sort of like creator collab collab type business. Does that mean that you would like hire other artists potentially along, along the line to like do work like alongside you? Absolutely, okay. absolutely. So yeah, I think once the I get to that creative agency uh, and that brand is big enough where people are, are thinking of Devo Customs as being creative is where I would bring people in to be like a, a part of the team. Um, you know, from probably like a art perspective to like photos to just kind of like establishing a team of creators. Um, but I would be very, very selective in who I brought in um, because and they, they would have to do the three, they would have to in line with those three behaviors. Um, 
you know, because I, I, then if, if I just open it up, right, it could dilute the brand. Right. Um, you know, people looking for short-term things. So I, eventually, I, yes, that to answer your question, yes. Um, but it would be it would be really selective. And do you do you see it as just like a hand-painted? You know, do you want to keep that like intimate, like hand-painted um, fabric? Yeah. Or, or do you? Would you like look into expanding into like graphic design and things like that? That's a good question. Um, eventually, yeah, everything from like graphic design to like video. Um, I think brands can be like really like lucrative, like across. I don't know if that's the right word, but like across different like products and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, um, what's a good example? Like, if Netflix made T-shirts, people would probably buy those, right? Mm -hmm. I, that's kind of a bad example, but like, I'm, I I think if like there's a if there's like a brand that people know, I think people will, will buy like or not. People will like associate that type of content with that brand, right. and so I, I don't really think I would silo it into kind of one or the other, but. Um, but yeah, that, yeah, that would be the vision. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. How have you been able to speed up the process of actually painting on the shirts? Because I can imagine yeah. that's like the longest part in the whole process. Absolutely, that's a great question. Um, yeah, so it, it's it's funny. I actually work pretty quickly, um, so I can finish a jacket if I have like a plan and an idea, and usually like four hours over like however many days. Um, so I mean, some obviously take longer, but that that's probably the average. Uh, so I, I work quickly, um, and then like when I'm thinking of like ideas, right? If someone doesn't provide like a picture, and like I'm, I'm like that's like an always-on thing. Like I'll be like walking around, like oh, you know, maybe that's a good I I idea for that. And so like I try to get as much of the planning done ahead of time. So then when I sit down and paint, like that's that it's go time. Like I'm, I'm ready to to focus on that. Um, and I like as far as the speed, like. I think people recognize that I'm like one person, and so I'm just like really transparent about like how long the process takes, um, and just so it's setting clear guidelines about like what the turnaround is, um, and yeah, and how long they can expect. So I think that's that's important too. But I definitely try to crank them out as fast as possible. Yeah, good question. Yeah. Not really a question, but more of a general comment. I think the scarcity though, and like like that drives the demand, right? It takes a long time to make and it's really like a unique thing that no one else will have. So yep, I yep. think, uh, you know, your idea sounds really cool for the future and I can't wait to see you execute them and I'm sure you will, but I think the analogness of like, you know, you don't need to have a graphic design background to like make art and be doing something really special is super cool and I hope that continues and grows in whatever iterations in five years and 20. But then also, I just think the your like vision or mission statement about like everybody being creative yeah. as a creator is like amazing. Yeah, I, I think that's you. groundbreaking. Yeah, because like we just label people like you're creative, you're not creative. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. No, that that's really good comments and um, yeah, thank you for that. <laughs> and I and I I plan on embodying that throughout. Um, and so I'm, I'm, I don't have the you know ones and twos of exactly what that looks like, but um, that that is the mission of the brand, right? So it's maybe it's like having like more of a co-creation process for brands that want to work with the agency or something like that. But I definitely want that to be um, like embodied. No, <laughs> <laughs> just turn around. <laughs> We're just a little late. <laughs> no, you're good. Come on in. Thanks. Um, yeah. <laughs> Have yeah. you considered like doing your artwork on more than just jackets mainly? Because I think I saw one picture of jeans. That yeah. On. Yeah. Yeah. So I've done yeah jeans, um, flannels, shirts, um, yeah bags and, and stuff like that. Um, I've done like actual just real canvases too for for a couple people. So I don't like limit it I guess to certain types of product. But yes, more in the like wearable clothing. It just, it honestly started just as it's clothing because of me trying to do the portfolio oh, no, and like show that I could make cool too. clothes. Um, so, yeah, but yeah, I, I, I do some other stuff too. But it's like 95% jackets. That's really cool. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. I just wanted to get some insight on your process of like how you reach out to collaborate with people or how, how do you even go about like convincing an influencer, you know, to, yeah. to like. I don't know, work with you or, 
or use you or you know yeah yeah absolutely <clears throat> really good question um, I'll give some probably like examples I guess of what worked um, so it's it is really shooting and, and seeing who hits you back so I, I hit up Marcus like just emailed portlandgear.com mm. and he's just like such a good dude that he actually hit me back and like and so knowing that I got that that's we, we did that from there and so once Portland gear posted uh, Jake Lehman he's a player for the uh, Portland Trailblazers he uh, he followed me and so I was like oh he followed me and like once they follow you they, they'll more likely see like your DM right it'll get the like notification and so I hit him up and then once I hit him up I did a piece for him uh, offered to do that for free right and then um, that one led to like Montrez Harrell uh, he's another NBA player um, and so it's kind of like <coughs> finding that one nice one and then like <laughs> after that like the next person who might follow you or might con comment um, and I've gotten a lot of no's too right so it's not it's really it's a numbers game it, it's shooting a lot and it's coming in it's coming in real though too right it's not like people could easily decode like a spammy message of you just trying to hit up a bunch of people right to get your product on them like every person I've hit up I've been like pretty strategic about and like the, I mean and then some fall through right but I, did, I think it's being strategic about who you do want to partner with who you could see your brand partnering with and then yeah a numbers game mm -hmm. yeah and what about other people that you've worked with like um, C flow and like how do you bring people on to your team yeah um, man it's just kind of friends and if I get invited like before this C flow and I have we've been going to school together for four years so mm -hmm. it's it was just easy for him. He likes photography, and you know, I just generally want to jive with people who have like good vibes. I've worked with Devin, right? He's the, this this guy over here, the friend of mine, person. <laughs> Whatever. I don't know. You have so many different businesses. I don't even know. But um, I mean, we got coffee one time, and you know, like he brought like a notepad of like notes of like really specific things. I'm like, damn. I gotta be with this dude, he knows what he's doing. He's like, he's like organized, like, I don't even know what I had for breakfast this morning. <laughs> so, I, yeah, I don't know, dude. It's just like, a, it's a vibe, I guess, of, of who you wanna work with. Like, like I'm, yeah, I'm very, like, kind, right? So, like, I, I, talk, I like, talk to a bunch of people, I can get along with with other people, but I also, like, can figure out, like, yeah, we probably wouldn't see eye to eye, <laughs> or something like that. But, um, yeah, so I, just a vibe, I guess. <laughs> Do you charge the same price for every shirt, or do you like scale it based on how intense the artwork is and yep. like the clothing piece yep. itself and everything? Yeah, yeah. So I have a price range, um, and that's an interesting one. It's actually like changed quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So like in the beginning, right, I was trying to get as many orders as possible, and so I, my price point was a lot lower. Um, but now it's gotten to the point where I almost need to raise it to sort of filter out um, people who might not be as serious. Um, and so, yeah, right now, I think it's, I start at 200 and go up to 350, depending on, on how uh, intense the art is. And then, yeah, and that, I, I just be as transparent as possible. Like, hey, you know, this one took a lot longer and usually people are, are down. Um, but yeah, that was your question, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah? If you could go back to when you were starting, is there anything you would have done differently? No. <laughs> no, um, man. Like no, you know, I mean, you know I, what you know yeah, what yeah. I mean, I wish I had a better grasp on like those three things I mentioned. Like those were all like those were all lessons, you know. Those were all lessons. Um, and so, like, yeah, I remember being four months in, right before I hit up Marcus, being like, "Man, is this the move? Like, should I be doing this?" I, I was actually, I mean, I'll, I'll step back a little personal, but I. Um, I was I had the internship at Adidas, and then my contract ran out, and I was uh, I was looking for work, and uh, I had my girlfriend fiance at the time, and then a baby on the way, so I like needed I needed a job, um, and I was still doing this, and like there were times where like man I should not even do this anymore, like I shouldn't even focus on this, and then um, you know I just kept doing it because that was something I was passionate about and. I did end up getting the job at Adidas, which which helped, and then I could keep this going too. Um, so I guess yeah, just learning that like passion is really like the key driver, kindness and courage. I, mean, I already said this, but <laughs> but uh, 
Yeah, yeah, I guess, yeah, I guess those, like, from those three is sort of like things I wish I would have learned, but yeah, does that kind of answer your yeah. question? Okay. <laughs> Talk about the iconic uh, collaboration. Oh how they, yeah, how that came about, and that's something different. Yeah, definitely, Dad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> probably got paid to say that, but I actually brought the hoodie. Um, so yeah, there's there's a brand here um, from some students here called Iconic Clothing Wear, um, and they you know they had just started a brand, um, and they were I think they. Their first shirt sold really well and, and everything, and they were they were doing well. And then um, I released Volume One, which I, I think I gave to you. And so what that is basically um, is like a journal of Devo Customs and kind of the journey. Um, somehow it got into the guy who owns this hands. Um, his name's Billy. He used to play for the soccer team. He actually doesn't go here anymore, but I think his girlfriend does. Her name's Emily. Um, and then he was like, "Man, this is cool." Um, and then he, he reached out to me and, and wanted to collaborate. And um, for me, it was cool because it gave that opportunity to see what it would be like if I had like a branded thing, because I'd never really done like, you know, like bigger like apparel plays like this before. And it was valuable for me as it was kind of like a test the waters of like how, you know, this, this might work in the future. And then for them, it was just kind of cool to have this sort of like exclusivity that, that my brand brought. And so, um, and yeah, and going back to that UP slide, that was all UP. So I, he, he went to UP, and I think someone showed him the book who went to UP. Um, but yeah, so just, yeah, good vibes, UP. Yeah. <laughs> yeah? So just for some thought, when you, you mentioned maybe going to a line or a collection or something of that sort, yeah. do you consider, I don't know if medium is the right word, but changing like, instead of hand painting on every one to doing the design, obviously yourself in the painted style, but making it more of like a pre-scripted type thing to get more out yeah. of the word type thing? Yeah, I've played around with that. Um, to me, I'm gonna have to be creative with, because like going back to the mission that, that Monica brought up, that kind of doesn't, it doesn't empower the consumer to be creative. So like some ideas I have going right now is like maybe doing a line of just like all white clothing that just says like Devo. And like through that, through the storytelling, uh, people will be like inspired to like buy one so they can paint it themselves. So kind of doing something like that play, yeah, yeah, yeah. So where I'm still, you know, you know, mass producing or whatever, screen printing, but it's still that touch of creativity that the, the consumer gets to have. That's and, way cooler, actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that's that's sort of what that's that's kind of what I envisioned the the branded apparel being like. Yeah, good question. Do you ever recreate custom designs that other people have seen that they really like? Yeah, yeah, I've done that. I've done one, like the exact same one. It's it's kind of boring when you do it that way, but I mean, like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's fine. Like, I've done one that was like exactly the same, and then, um, you know, some people were like, man, I really like that theme. Can you kind of like iterate on that? Um, and so like, I'll, I'll change it maybe a little bit, but I've done, yeah. Uh, what's an example? Yeah, I've done probably like five different like Portland ones, right? So like trying to tweak, you know, this one's maybe more about roses, this one's about more the bridges, or yeah, yeah, stuff like that. But yeah, that, I mean, that happens quite a bit. If someone DMs me, they'll, they'll like show me a picture of one I've done, like I kind of want something like this, kind of like this. So yeah, that, that happens quite a bit. Yeah? Um, what made you decide to um, do artwork on garments? Because you could have done it on like, you know, yeah. another medium, but why on garments? Yeah, so that goes back to um, when I was trying to get the Adidas position mm -hmm. and, and be a designer, I was like, yo, I, I don't know like the complexities of the Photoshop and Illustrator and how to like make a screen and do that. I was like, I just wanna put stuff on a garment for people to wear. And I think, and for me that was like, here's my competitive advantage, how I'm standing out among the other candidates. Like I'm figuring out how this process really works. Like I'm doing this process and that's what's gonna be my pitch, right? To get a graphic design job. Um, and so, so yeah, I did like two or three and then he took the photos and then that's kind of when I discovered that it would be my own thing. And so that's kind of how it, yeah, it started on, on garments. Um, 
and like it, it was working because I mean, you, in in business you kind of have to find that niche, right? So like there's there's even thousands of people doing custom jackets, but there's even more that are artists, right? That are doing canvases and stuff, and it just so happened that garments were kind of like a little bit to the side, and so it, it kind of allowed people to narrow the focus on that. Um, so yeah. Yeah, I like ever, all the questions. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever considered selling your custom designs to like Adidas so that they, if they really liked it, they can market it for you, make more money, and then give you more money for it? That, that is so funny that you mentioned that. So actually in that book, I talk a little bit about the influencer stuff and um, like some, sometimes them not following through. So I've had two product, or projects for Adidas that um, worked really hard on and tried to get it in the right hands and they both, no, nothing happened from them. Um, I mean, I didn't have like a true like contract, like, you know, do this, but like people heard about what I was doing. Hey, if you do this, I'll get a PR story behind it and stuff like that. And, um, and they're like, oh, I'll send it to one of our like biggest influencers, like Boost Vibes, and they'll, they'll blow it up. And I was like, okay, cool. Um, and so, yeah, I've, I've considered it and I've tried to do it, I guess. <laughs> but um, that, yeah, it, it, those haven't turned out well. Um, so I, I'm kind of tired of like trying to go to them, I guess, until they maybe like reach out to me. But I don't know, maybe it's the courage to keep going to them. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so I, yeah, to your point, I guess I, I've, I've had like semi opportunities, but, but they haven't worked out. But that would, I mean, that would be a dream, to be honest, with like sport and passion, um, doing something through that would be really, really cool. So definitely open to it. Do you have a favorite piece that you've made? Ooh, it's too slow. <laughs> I've shot a lot of them. So. Yeah, yeah. What's your favorite piece? I've always really liked the Migos one, honestly. Yeah? But, <laughs> so so. I like that one, too. Um, it's fun. I mean, there's the ones that I really like, proud of the art that I did on them, and then there's the ones that have like the, the coolest stories. So like <coughs> CJ ones, obviously, were probably my favorite to work on. Um, but from like a pure like art perspective, it might have been this um, this Kid Cudi one I did like when I was first starting out. Um, I don't know, just really like how it came together. Or Marcus's right there. Oh, yeah. You want to stand up? No. Yeah. You can sit down. Yeah. Um, yeah. Probably the Kid Cudi one. Um, but yeah, the ones with, with cool stories, I'd probably say that's probably my, yeah, my favorites. Yeah. Good question. Rad. How, how'd, you, oh, yeah. how'd you get your, like the Devo customs? Does that just come from your last name or? Yeah, oh. that's a good question. Uh, so that was my nickname in high school, Devo. Oh. And then. I do like custom stuff, so I figured out to do <laughs> And then I was like, oh, I kind of like the ring. Except when everyone sees me, they think it's Devo Customs. And then like I just like don't even correct them because that would just be too much. And then, so yeah, Devo Customs. So. Riley? Did you immediately land on Devo Customs or did you bounce between a few? Uh, and then how did you choose? I actually just landed on it. <coughs> yeah, yeah. For me, like picking the name shouldn't be super hard. I think like sometimes people like overthink like picking the name. It's like, I mean, Google was probably like a weird name until it was Google, or like I don't know some other weird examples. But like I don't know. I think like you can pick a name and then kind of make what what the name is. So. Yeah, I, I just like a Devo nickname and customs. And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what would your like ideal dream collab be? If, like, one of Dang. Number one. Fire. Um. Something with sports. I mean, Adidas would be cool. Something who's like doing something powerful with sports. Um, 
Yeah, like something who's standing for something bigger than sports. I mean, Kaepernick comes to mind, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm an Adidas guy, so I don't know. <laughs> I think that would be cool. Um, my, one of my biggest inspirations starting this is there's an artist named Warren Lotus. Um, I don't know, he's like kind of a different brand, but like he, he was the first one that ever I ever saw like doing custom jackets. Um, and he had, but now he doesn't do them anymore, right? Because he's blown up. But um, that'd be kind of a cool like full circle story. Um, yeah, that's a good question. So yeah, probably like an athlete who's like standing for something big or like an artist who kind of helped me go from like the ground up. Well, cool. Thank you guys. I'm gonna do a little bit of the raffle. If you guys wanna stick around for that. <laughs> <laughs>